All right, welcome back to another episode of PC Hardware News, where Copite tweets things and we report on it. We got lots of other stuff as well, don't worry about it. Now this one I don't wanna to spend too long because initially this seems really exciting. We're seeing RTX 4080 Time Spy Extreme scores at greater than 15,000, RTX 4070 Time Spy Extreme scores about 10,000, but then he says these scores are based on specs I mentioned before, Honestly, it's not quite sure yet, except for the RTX 4090. Well, I don't care. Well, I'm not quite sure what that last line <laughs> is getting at, um, but I think what we're taking here is that he's confirming that the RTX 4090 Time Spy Extreme score that I've reported on in a previous video was one that he's sure about. However, these other scores seem to just be estimates based on specs that he has leaked in the past. Now I'm gonna hop over to a video cards chart here because they do a good job uh, keeping track of all of the various rumored specs and whatnot. Ah, slide out of the way here. Ah. And um, uh, so this is what we're seeing as far as the 4090, 4080, and 4070 in terms of the current rumored specs. Now the 4090 is expected to be on the AD102 chip, whereas the 4080 would be rumored to be down to the AD103. There's also rumored to be a full die AD102 that would be even stronger than the 4090, possibly a 4090 Ti or Titan, something like that. And then the 4070 is also rumored to be going down to an AD104. Now I don't like the fact, <sighs> How should I put this? It seems like if this is true, that we're going down from the 102 to the 103, that NVIDIA is wanting there to be a larger segmentation in the market between the 90 class GPU and the 80 class GPU than there was with the RTX 3000 series. We're really going past like the RTX 3080 starts having significantly diminishing returns. It seems like they're trying to get a significant gap here if these rumored specs end up being true. And um, that would, again, also go along with these time spy scores. But again, I don't, I mean, I think just es just randomly estimating a time spy number off of specs is a little bit silly, and the rumored specs, uh, I think, do a little better job of speaking for themselves. I'm also not sure how reasonable this would be. Like, would we really expect 10,000 if this is getting 19,000, if this CUDA cores are cut down that much? I mean, we don't know the clock speeds, but we're also expecting lower memory speeds here and, and all of that. So those time spy scores specifically seem a bit much. Also, uh, talking release dates, we're still hearing rumors of October for the 4090, and then more and more rumors that the 4080 and 4070, while well, they may be announced soon around that time, um, could be delayed. Like originally we were thinking November and then December releases for those, and that, that could be being pushed back. Now, um, uh, along with this, I will note that there... <sighs> There was a rumor being reported here, some kind of uh, Chinese source. This looks like, uh, I, I'm Ilya Kornechuk. I, I'm sure I have mispronounced that from Pro Hi-Fi, sorry, Pro High Tech, not Hi-Fi. Recently stated in a YouTube video that the first batch of NVIDIA's upcoming GeForce RTX 40 series graphics cards is expected to be dispatched in less than a month. Um, and that this information is coming from his own Chinese supplier. But this one seems to be kind of way out there and not lining up with what I'm hearing from everything else. So I thought I'd throw this out there that this one source is claiming things could be coming out sooner than everybody else seems to be thinking. Um, so yeah, I I'm not gonna follow up too much on that one. Also, uh, NVIDIA has announced a SIGGRAPH 2022 special address with CEO Jensen Huang on August 9th, although I would not expect there to be a reveal of new um, you know, gaming GPUs at this. If we got any hardware reviews uh, reveals here, it would be much more likely to be something that's more professional focused, um, and that's if we get any hardware um, reveals at all. You can see the lineup of their topics um, here if you're interested, but I'm, I'm not expecting to see this be a launch announcement or anything like that for the new gaming hardware. Now, um, speaking of the chips being cut down here and a larger segmentation between the 4080 and the 4090 class, GPUs, let's hop into, do we know anything about the upcoming AMD GPUs? Ah, I'll slide over here. Now the source for this one 
uh, is Red Gaming Tech over here on YouTube. Feel free to check him out. Um, he does a lot of upcoming leaks and uh, rumors and whatnot, and does seem to have some of his own sources for information uh, about these upcoming GPUs. So some of this he still seems a little bit unsure of if you listen to the video. But what really caught my eye on this was all of these 7900 class GPUs. And so not just a 7900 XT, but a 7950 XT and 7975 XT. Um, I, I don't like that. <laughs> now, hear me out here, because this is showing that Navi 31, the top-end GPU die, could be entirely reserved for the 7900 class GPUs, and that Navi 32 would be where we'd get the 7800 uh, XT and 7800 and getting the 7700 XT in there as well, and the Navi 33 going down to our 7600 and XT and 7500 XT. Now, if we, again, compare that to what we were seeing from the rumors from NVIDIA over here, again, that's that 90 class being on the top-end GPU die and the 80 class dropping down to the, the, the next step down GPU. I mean, it does kind of line up with that, so I, I guess that could make sense, but Personally, I really liked that, for example, with AMD, the set of the, sorry, 6800 XT was extremely close to that top end performance with your 7900 XT. And again, with Nvidia, the 3080, especially like the 12 gigabyte version, giving an excellent bang for the buck compared to going up to any kind of 3090 class. Hoping that doesn't mean that we're, uh, you know, uh, not going to get as good of that, like just one step down and you get something really good <laughs> uh, for this next gen. But really what matters isn't what things are called, it's what they're priced at, their price and their performance. So we'll see what happens um, and, and just kind of, for now at least, let's hope for, for the best. Now what's happening over here with Intel? Well, we've seen a little bit more demos of the A750 and this one showed the... Um, uh, the game Death Stranding running at 1440p, the frame rate counter going between 80 to 100 FPS, and the um, this was really to demonstrate their variable refresh rate support, so they're just showing, yes, it, it works uh, good. Uh, but since we got frame rate counters, I think a lot of people were curious what kind of resolution and settings was the game running at there. So it looks like Ryan Shrout from Intel uh, has said that in this demo, the game is running between 80 and 100 FPS on the ARC A750 graphics card using variable refresh rate. Um, and that they did update in response to questions that the displays were set to 2560 by 1440 uh, variable refresh rate and 3440 by 1440 HDR resolutions, respectively. And they were running at the default preset. Now, I don't have Death Stranding myself, um, so I'm not quite sure what the default preset is or what it compares to, but if you want to get some idea of the uh, performance there and you are more familiar with that game or look up some benchmarks for it, that could possibly help you out. Uh, if you want a quick, uh, again, update on the rumored lineup from Intel here, uh, for this ARC series, there you go, along with, these are just rumored MSRPs, don't read too much into this at this point, and even a, these specs are rumors, most of the specs have not been fully confirmed. We've got some confirmations of the memory sizes and things like that, uh, but a lot of this is still up in the air. Now, moving uh, on with that, uh, Moore's Law is Dead, who again is another uh, good YouTube channel for a lot of going really deep into the leaks and rumors side of things, um, has apparently some internal documents uh, showing just what a disaster the launch dates and roadmaps have been for Intel's ARC series. So feel free to jump into that video if you want a lot more information on this, but it's looking like this is, <laughs> Intel, we, we all know it. Intel has had some trouble getting these out the door. Um, now, a lot of this seems to be down to the software side of things and getting their drivers up to snuff for gaming. And along with that note, uh, it looks like Intel has moved their integrated GPUs from their sixth through 10th gen uh, CPUs to legacy status and seems to be um, all, like kind of splitting off the, the driver stacks, I believe, for those as well. So 
I don't know, hope, you know, <laughs> if they're doing what they need to do to get their drivers working, I guess good for them. But there's also been rumors that they will actually completely kill off their, um, kill off their, their gaming GPUs. Now this is absolutely not confirmed, but in this same video from Red Gaming Tech here, towards the end, uh, he's talking about Intel Arc Gaming canceled. Now he says that he hopes this isn't true. He has it from one source, um, but doesn't, you know, is waiting on further confirmation. I believe some other um, uh, leaks and rumors focused uh, YouTube outlets have also mentioned that hearing the same thing, that Intel is considering killing their um, their gaming GPU lineup. I hope that isn't true, that they're not just gonna throw in the towel. Um, I guess we'll just wait and see. It would be nice if they just take the loss for a while while, while they get their drivers up to snuff and push through it because I would love to have three players in this, um, in this, uh, you know, in this space. I think more competition can only help. Now, uh, speaking a little bit more about Intel, since we're on the topic, their 13700K and 13600K have already been tested despite not being launched yet. Now, this is from Extreme Player from Billy Billy. And Extreme Player has already tested the 13900K, and I've reported on that in the past. Now, it's important to note that he doesn't have, you know, these aren't the, uh, the launched version of the product. So you might not be getting exactly the full standard performance um, and, and things like that. And I actually, I hope that at least the power efficiency gets a little bit better on the final release um, because it's looking like the power efficiency on these uh, isn't looking great. And now, basically the overall summary, you can feel free to dive into this source, seems to be, first of all, that these aren't gaming benchmarks right now. So if you're focused on gaming benchmarks, hopefully we'll, uh, hopefully we'll see that in the future. Uh, last time he did the 13900K, um, he eventually did a, a more gaming focused review afterwards. So maybe we'll see that in a future uh, hardware news video from me. But what we're seeing here is that the, um, the i7 is seeing about a 10% boost in single core performance tests and a 32 to 34% better score in multi-threading, which would make sense because it has more efficiency cores. It literally just has more cores explaining the outsized multi-threaded uh, performance increase. We're seeing the i5-13600K um, only seeing about a 5% single core improvement and 39 to 41% uplift in the multi-threading. Again, though, like I said, um, this is not uh, the full released uh, silicon and all that. Now, what I don't like here is that the 13700K is reaching power consumptions of 244 watts when compared with the 12700K predecessor going up to 188 watts, which is honestly already a lot for a CPU. Anyway, and the same applying to the i5-13600K, uh, which looks like it has increased power requirement of 178 watts, which is 30 watts higher than the 12600K in that same test. So anyway, if, if you're wanting more multi-threading performance, this could be good. Gaming performance, I would actually expect, hopefully, to see better than just this five to 10% gain, because one of the big things that they're changing with this architecture jump is the L2 cache. And so by increasing the cache, a lot of games should see better performance, um, maybe more so than what we're seeing in just these uh, single-threaded results, which are probably mostly just due to the clock speed increase. Now, um, Intel is also confirming that their 13th gen core Raptor Lake mobile chips will launch by the end of 2022, which when compared to the Alder Lake um, uh, uh, mobile you know, side of things, how, how that went, um, this is actually getting the mobile chips out sooner than we saw that previous time around, which is good to see. Now, when are we going to see the Ryzen 7000 series? Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think this is this one is true here, but we're seeing from Tech Power Up uh, an article saying that we could see this Ryzen 7000 launching on or before the 4th of August. I'm going to say right now, this is nonsense. There's no way we get it this fast. Now, where are they getting this headline from? It looks like it's from a, um, uh, well, it's from this. And this is just talking about a motherboard event 
And on the motherboard event, it says supporting the recent launch of AMD Ryzen 7000 series processors. And the date of this, uh, of this event is Friday, August 5th. So if you take this for what it says, that there's an event on August 5th talking about the recent launch of the Ryzen 7000 series, then you'd have to be like, well, I guess the Ryzen 7000 series has to launch before August 5th. But I think that that just that don't read so much into this particular thing. I think that's just an unfortunate typo or inaccurate information. I think we're gonna get information about these motherboards. I doubt we would see um, the actual launch, maybe some kind of an unveiling uh, to go along with this. So maybe we'll get some actual official information about the 7000 series, but I don't think there's any way they're actually going to be launched <laughs> in any kind of meaningful way by that point. Now, um, speaking of AMD news though, this is huge in the GPU side of things. Uh, their latest GPU drivers have added noise suppression. So this is an RTX voice competitor. Now, I don't know if I'll have time to test this out at some point, but it's possible. Um, but this look, and it looks like it'll be baked into their actual driver software. This is out and available now. And I think the even bigger news is performance optimizations for OpenGL, where AMD has lagged behind. Now, most newer games don't use OpenGL, but uh, some extremely popular games like Minecraft still do. There's also some emulators and things like that that use this. Now, um, there's some other up updates to their software, including um, Radeon Boost, getting some game expansion, and uh, Radeon Super Resolution, RSR, I think getting uh, some streamlined to how it works, including I think working better for games that don't have the um, exclusive full screen. You can drive in, uh, dive into the rest of these driver notes. But I think the big thing here is the OpenGL performance. AMD is claiming some massive performance gains here uh, in Minecraft. It's looking like up to 89%, 92%, 90%. Of course, in other places, they say 85%. So I don't know what number they're actually claiming here. Um, I haven't had a chance to test this out for myself. I've actually been getting sunburned on the beach. I don't know if you can see it at all here. Uh, for a few days, my last video had been recorded ahead of time and just released while I was out of town. Um, but uh, <laughs> it looks like Ancient Gameplays, who speaking of other YouTube channels, uh, is a great source of especially AMD related information and a lot of times tests out newer drivers and, and, and things like that. Uh, does look like he's seeing a huge average FPS gain um, on the, uh, on the 6600 XT he's testing out here in Minecraft on this new driver. So it does seem to be giving some massive performance gains. Although I think, um, when using shaders, um, I think he saw a little bit of an unstable frame time graph. So feel free to dig into that video. I have not had time to watch the entire thing myself. Um, so I'll point you to the ancient gameplays video there for a good source if you want to follow up on that. Now, more good news for AMD is that um, FSR 2.0 is getting expanded into another game. This seems to be out now. So Chernobylite has FSR 2.0 added to it, according to these uh, release announcements here on Steam, which is fantastic. And I believe if, if you're interested, I think there was also some... Uh, DLC added to this game and such as well. So uh, if you're interested in Chernobylite, maybe check that out along with the FSR 2.0 support. And the last thing I'll leave us on here is that it looks like Intel is killing off their Optane memory business entirely, um, for, at least according to Tom's hardware over here. So, um, Anyway, if you're into Optane, well, too bad. <laughs> all right, guys, we're gonna end the video here. Let me know what you think about all of this in the comments section, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.